Hi, this is Brandon Smilly from ThirstGym.com. Today we're talking about an exercise called the ab wheel fallout. This is an abdominal exercise that involves the good old fashioned ab wheel. Chances are you've probably seen somebody do this exercise at the gym, and I will also probably bet that you've seen them do it incorrectly. So we're talking about how to do the ab wheel correctly and why you might implement it in your training program or in, a, in an athlete's training program. And this is essentially an anti-extension flexion exercise for the abdominals in the trunk. We've kind of talked about the blast strap fallout in the past. Very similar concept, except we're going to just use the ab wheel instead. And I'll kind of talk about the differences between those when we're finished here. So I've got an Eric's pad here for my knees. A good old-fashioned ab wheel. You could probably find these at like Walmart or you know Dick Sporting's Good or Academy Sports or something like that. Um, they're not terribly expensive. So you know, if you're training at home, this is probably something that's a really good investment um, that you could definitely do. Um, but anyways, we're going to have our knees on our Eric's pad and hands on the handle. And the, the first thing that we want to make sure that we do is that we keep our rib cage and our pelvis stacked on top of each other. That's going to optimize our abdominal training. It's going to get the most from the exercise. It's also going to protect the low back and prevent us from having low back pain. But you'll also see why we don't need to be in a standing position. Are the people that can do these in the standing position? Yes. Are they probably into overextension? Probably. So let's talk about how we can optimize this with getting, you know, more from less, so to speak. So on our knees, hands are right underneath our shoulders. And the way that I like to coach this, I like to keep the toes dug in first. Okay, so keep your toes on the ground. We're gonna bring our pelvis forward. Okay, we're not gonna leave it out behind us. We're gonna bring our pelvis forward. That should immediately right now just get your abdominals kicked on right there. If you're going to have everything stacked the way it should be from this position here, you should feel your abdominals engaged. They should feel like they're, they're kind of solid. Okay. Once you get here, then we start rolling out. And once we get out, we just go until we're comfortable. So, you know, for me, I'm probably going to get close to being fully extended, but again, I'm here. I'm going to reach out and get as close as I can. And then I'm going to come back. Hips stay forward and back. Hips stay forward and come back. What you'll commonly see, which I don't even know if I can do it, is the people will start here and they're going to do this. Okay. Now I can tell you right now, I didn't feel anything in my abs from that whatsoever. There was no tensing or bracing component for that extension. But when I was here, when I had my hips pulled forward, I already feel my abdominals and obliques working. And then once I even reach, then I feel it even more. And that's really about all I need to do and come back. So when you come back, you don't have to even bring your hips back because this is basically taking the tension off the abdominals. If we're trying to quote unquote, you know, build them, get them stronger, improve time under tension and, and all these things to improve hypertrophy and strength, then we need to try to keep tension on them and not let our hips come back. So here to here there's a big difference between those two exercises and I think if you if your clients can't understand how to stack their rib cage and their pelvis don't even have them do this exercise because they're probably not going to benefit from it so I will admit that I don't program the ab wheel a lot just the sheer fact that I work with a lot of 10 to 18 year old kids and while some of them are freakishly strong and incredible athletes we still get a lot of dividends on like planks and dead bugs and you know basic bracing mechanics that they need to learn how to master before they even get to this and have moving appendages so that's how you would do that from a standing position it would be the same you're going to be here you're going to get your pelvis tucked underneath you and then you're going to roll out and that's as far as i can get with looking like keep them stacked now like i said if i want to try to just keep everything extended and go out like this and come back up by all means but we, we've lost that cylinder of compression between our uh, pelvis and our rib cage, which, in my opinion, defeats the purpose. So if you're going to do these, let's do them right. From a programming standpoint, three, four, five sets, six, eight, ten reps is probably going to be enough if you're doing them right. Um, you're probably going to see your athletes drift more towards eights and tens, maybe twelves. The other reason why I would program the blast strap fallout over this is you can adjust the height of those handles we talked in that video in the past which makes it more scalable for the average person you can teach all of this to be stacked and get some movement much easier than you can from the ab wheel because 
we're closer to the ground and our 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 back is more parallel to the ground versus the blast strap we've got a bigger angle and that angle is going to mean we're able to adapt it for the athlete more we got more room and wiggle room to get them closer to the ground so Hopefully that answers all your questions on this, why you might choose this, why you might not, how to properly do it if you are going to put in a training program and, and coach it correctly. Um, again, I think it's a great exercise. It's also just botched like crazy. And um, yeah, I wanted to make sure that people know how to do it. So if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thanks. Have a great day.